do some of us need more help in, or firstly, if you could just tell us a little bit about what the course was that we, we did. Oh, sure. You know, um, I've gotten very interested in a kind of down-to-earth, old-school uh, focus on the how of learning. If you think about it, we're uh, whether as children or teenagers or adults, in one setting after another where we're learning things, but we're almost never taught how to learn. And that's the X factor, because if you can learn how to learn, in other words, and I especially don't mean, I don't mean remembering phone numbers. I, I mean uh, learning more uh, powerful motivation or learning resilience, uh, learning compassion, uh, learning more skills, uh, more mental health with your own mind. That's the kind of learning I'm talking about. If you get better at learning, well, then every day you learn a little more, you grow a little more. Or you develop a little more, you cultivate the wholesome inside your heart a little more than you would have otherwise. And those increments each day add up to huge changes that are realistic and woven into your brain along the way over time. And so that's what the training was about that we did, including its professional applications. And uh, what I would say about that is that uh, I think two points. First, just under ordinary circumstances, these days especially, we tend to zoom along in life. And a lot of research shows that we tend to be having many mild but actual pleasant moments, enjoyable, positive experiences. The problem is, because of the two-stage process of learning the brain, if we don't sustain that experience very long, it doesn't transfer into neural structure. And the way we become as you know, there's a saying, neurons that fire together, wire together. In other words, the way that we become more compassionate is to have experiences of compassion that get wired into the brain. We become more confident by having experiences of self-worth or, ex or, op or experiences of optimism that are learned. In other words, lead to a change in neural structure or function. We become more mindful. We become more positive, we become more loving by having experiences of mindfulness, gratitude, or love, let's say, that are actually installed in our brain. This seems obvious, except we tend to ignore the implications. So as we go through our day, uh, on the one hand, uh, or in the first place, we tend to zoom along. So these positive experiences, ordinary, natural, down-to-earth experiences, usually mild ones, but real ones. These experiences are wasted on the brain, typically. They're, we don't take the time under ordinary circumstances, the extra 5, 10, 20 seconds, to really give them a chance to transfer from short-term memory buffers to long-term storage, right? To sift down into uh, the structures of the brain. And in the second place, as you know, we have this negativity bias that makes the brain like Velcro for the bad, but Teflon for the good. So we tend to routinely overlearn from unpleasant, negative, harmful experiences, those get fast-tracked into storage in the brain and then generalized outside of the narrow, useful uh, point of that learning. And then also, uh, good experiences, beneficial experiences, tend to be underlearned, even though learning from beneficial experiences, transferring them into the brain, is the primary way to grow psychological resources, mental resources, inner strengths of various kinds. So, in effect, we evolved this tendency because that's what helped our ancestors survive. Mother Nature is tilted, as it were, toward survival and passing on genes that pass on genes, but she's tilted against, in effect, quality of life. And while that design was very effective back in the Serengeti. It kept our ancestors alive and we are, we are their great-grandchildren today on top of the food chain. Today, in the 21st century, with the Stone Age brain, it leads to a lot of needless suffering and a lot of needless conflict between individuals, groups, and nations, frankly. And this design feature of the brain, a kind of well-intended but universal learning disability, um, also leads to a kind of bottleneck that slows down the rate of growing resources inside the mind. So what my training's about and what I've gotten very interested in, as you know, um, is how to pop open that bottleneck to help 
of regular people and the flow of everyday life pop up in that bottleneck so they can take in more of the good that is actually available to them rather than wasting it on their brain. So that's a long answer. That'll be my longest answer. <laughs> I needed to get a lot of stuff out. I'll be shorter from now on. That's so, a lot. Thank you. Thank you.